Welcome to this Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how we can bake tiled textures in Blender. To start off with, we'll need the default cube. We're going to go to the material editor, go to base color, and we're going to add a image texture. We're just going to open up the texture we want to use. In this case, I want to be using fabric. Make sure that the, the texture you use is actually seamless and tileable, or else you're going to see very distinct lines and contrast between the texture when it tiles. Once we've done that, I'm just going to go to the lip mode so we can have a look. Now this texture here is far too big for this meter squared cube. So the first thing I'm going to do is unwrap it a little bit better to give it a bit more UV space. I'm going to go up to UV editing and as you can see here the default is leaving a lot of space unused. So I'm just going to press A to make sure I've selected everything. I'm going to go up to UV and I'm going to go to Smart UV Project. Click OK and as you can see now each face is taking up a lot more of this textured image space. If I go to the lit window again, you can see it's just using a little bit more of that image. But I want to have it so this is tiled so I get more of this pattern a lot smaller as if it's actually material. So the next thing I need to do is go to my shading tab up here. Here are our shading nodes. Currently I just have the fabric texture plugged into the principal node and then material output. So to tile this texture I'm going to need two new nodes. The first node I'm going to need is a vector mapping node and the second uh, input I'm going to need is texture coordinates node like so. So on the texture coordinates node, we want to have the UV information plugged into the mapping vector. And then we want the vector of the mapping node plugged into the vector of our texture. That means that now, when I start playing around with either the location, the rotation, or the scale, it's going to affect how the texture is going to behave. So the location is just moving the texture around, the rotation is rotating the texture, although that isn't going to do too much in this case, unless you were doing something like tank tracks or something moving. So I'll bring those back to zero. In this case, I'm more interested in scale. I'm going to change my scale to five on each one. And immediately you can see this is now tiled it so that our fabric texture is much more condensed, it's much tinier. What it's doing though is duplicating that uh, texture by the number that I put into the scale here. So once that's done we just need to add one more node and that will be for our baking. That will be the node that the program bakes out to. So I'm going to go add texture image texture. And I'm not going to put anything in this for now. This is going to be the location where it's going to bake out to. So on to baking. Now that we've we've done our tiling, we should start to go into the baking part of the process. So to start that we need to go up to compositing and we need to go to the top left hand corner because currently this is not the window we want. We want to go up to the top left hand corner and we want to go down to our shader editor and that will bring up our shader editor nodes from earlier. From here we are going to go to our UV editor so we've got all this now so we got our UV editor just here and we need to make a map to go into that empty space we made earlier. So we're going to go up to new and depending on how detailed you want this bake to be 
depends on how big this number needs to be. It should ideally be to the power of 2. In this case I'm going to do 2048 by 2048 like so. I'm going to turn off alpha. Alpha will turn this into a PNG with no background information wherever your texture is not baked. That's very good for things where you want to say make a decal and you don't want anything in the background. So I'm going to turn that off and just give it the name cloth and click OK. So this is the texture template we're going to be projecting onto. We're going to bake to. So we need to go back to our compositing um, tab up here. We need to click on our image texture empty node here and just plug in our cloth texture. Now very importantly we need to select this. Don't have it deselected, don't have anything else clicked, you must have this selected. If this is not selected what will happen is the program will try and bake it to the primary node which is this one down here which will cause a quite a nasty error where it's trying to bake over itself and will result in just a duplication of this texture here. So make sure you've got this one selected. We are then going to go to our UV editing again so we can see our map and our model and then we're going to go over to the rendering tab up here our rendering properties. We're going to change EV to cycles and then we're going to go down to our bake tab here. Under our bake tab we have uh, a collection of what it's going to be baking out. By default it is combined and combined means it's going to take all of these properties and it's going to bake it onto the map. In this case it's also going to do direct lighting which is our main source and indirect lighting which would be any light that's bouncing off of objects and hitting the model. So I'm just going to click bake here and we'll see the result. Now that our texture has baked onto this map here, we can see that if we zoom in, it is baked with a lot of detail. Because I've decided to bake everything, so I've decided to use the combine option with everything selected, you can see on this map that it has captured the light almost perfectly. You've got where the light is mainly hitting, decreasing the further away from the light. We have faces that are barely lit by the light and then we have the faces I just deselect everything uh, lit at all so let's just try this again with a slightly more advanced uh, lighting setup so I'm going to go into object mode I'm going to go up to our layout tab here and I'm going to add a mesh plane to the scene so let's scale that up Gonna move it down, delete the model, and I'm gonna add a curve to the back. Through so on the z-axis. Well, oh, that's fine. Control B, so a chamfer, or a bevel, and then just scale that a little bit wider. So I've got something for the cube for light to bounce off of and give us more of that indirect light. I'm also going to take this uh, light here and I'm going to shift D and duplicate that. So I've got two light sources in the scene. And I'm going to click back on the cube. I'm going to go back to our rendering tab and back to bake. And we're going to click bake again and see what the result is. So this time it took a little bit longer as the map itself had to take into account more sources of light and more light bouncing off of objects. As we can see here it's no longer just one or two 
uh, these faces being lit and the rest in complete darkness, there is a noticeable degree of different levels of shade depending on where the light is hitting. What I like to do with uh, baking textures is I like to just go down to diffuse and turn off lights direct and indirect just leaving color. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to have a base texture with no light on it that I can then add decals to at a higher resolution so before when we made the UV unwrap the base uh, it was at 240, uh, 248 by 248 what I usually do is I'll have a texture of 4k so I have 4000 by 4000 or 4096 by 4096 so I can bake a very high quality uh, base uh, map base texture that I can then add details to and then rebake it to a lower quality later on so I can bake it down later on so as you can see here there's no light on this and that just allows me to add different details and paint different details in before baking it again with the lighting added finally once you're done make sure that you go to image and save as and you save your textures out that way that you'll keep that information thank you for watching this tutorial I hope you found it interesting